<coughs> right, I'm just going to go around it with my little microfiber. Make sure all these surfaces are clean. There's no dust. Now you've probably seen here uh, that little tool I've made, like a guide to put the seal on, goes on to there, and we want some oil on this stuff. We'll put some of this stuff on to uh, slide the seal on. We don't have to worry about the bottom one yet, but we want that to go over the top. Now I'm going to get the cover. And I'll show you what I did. So there's the cover. I've put the gasket all, all ready with some, I've tacked it on with some blue Hylomar, but at the bottom, you can see here, I've used the uh, black silicone because I have had problems with them leaking out the bottom, so I don't want to have that happen again. So, and also, we've got to line up the oil pump here so it corresponds with the oil pump drive. This might be tricky. So, see how that seal, that guide just helps that along. So let's turn the crank a bit. Can't get the uh, alignment point on the on the cover. No pump. Ah, oh, there we go. That's it. That's it. And then that comes off. And there we go. Oh, simple as that. I bet you didn't see a thing, did you? Ah, oh, I'm not going to do it again. But that guide is really. Uh, it's a really handy little thing, but like I said, trying to line it up on here is difficult, so it's easier with a sump off and you can turn it around. See what I mean? Right, um, bolts. As it's not very often I take these covers off, I uh, downloaded and printed out a page from the uh, Brave manual. Um, if you've ever bought a memory stick, <laughs> I know I had a few problems with the early sticks, but we've got that corrected now. But um, if you go onto workshop manuals, and it'll say, I think it's a Discovery Best 300 TDI manual. I might, this might be on later versions. Uh, it does go into comprehensive, more comprehensive details than any other book. I don't know why there's two different versions, but it does work. Oh, and if you do go on to uh, some earlier versions of uh, Rev, you, it'll come up with some faults. Just say uh, X, 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 cancel, 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 and it'll work. Believe me. So... Here's our bolts. We're going to put in the 25mm ones going to here with a bit of luck. Are they 25mm? Nope, that one is. They're all different lengths, so we're going to work them all out. All the inner ones seem to be 25mm. I'll put all these in because this is a bit boring. So to do the front bolts I've printed out a page out of the Rave manual and um, it shows you which lengths of bolts here go in which holes so you're not messing about. But at the same time on the next page there's a tightening sequence at 25 newton meters that you should tighten these up to. So let's get on with that then. Well, let's see if you can see that. Yeah, you can probably make it out. I don't know. Probably done it before. And the, it's 25 newton meters. One. Six, six, 
seven. sealer is squidging out quite nicely out the bottom. I'll show you that when we get it all put back together. For now, for now that's, uh, that's alright. We don't have to do any more to that. Um, yeah, we'll do the, I think we'll do the rods and the pistons now. Hmm. Yeah, we'll do the rods and the pistons. Uh, the pistons were wildly out of balance, or out of whatever they are. That's 9.15 So we have to, the, this one here is 10 grams heavier than that one If we can get them within a couple of grams it's not much. What's a gram? See that's 3 grams It's not much is it? But well I'll play with them a bit because I've one of them I started to uh, polish off a little bit. This one here uh, I've just taken off the manufacturer's burrs and stuff like this, not too much, you know, like there's little bits and pieces but I've just taken off the manufacturer's mark and I've got this one down by 3 grams already so I'm just going to play around with that a bit so after a bit of a messing about we've got 903 903 903 903. The pins 340 340 340 340. I'm happy with those. It took a bit of messing about to get them down, but they're okay. But they were tremendously off uh, 915 down to 903. I did chase one down a little bit too much so that to make them, they were originally 904 so I just took a gram off and made them all the same. It's not much to do, well it is a bit of a mess about but uh, I think it'll be worth it, it should run smoother because like I say, uh, they were, how much now, well, t 11 grams out on one piston was 11 grams out, not much but it'll make a difference. Having marked up the pistons, uh, I actually I had, to, I had to mark them A, B, C and D because uh, somebody's pinched me number stamps. But uh, I marked on the sides just slightly with my light numbers. And now I'm going to just uh, use engine oil on these bits because uh, these are kind of a fine tolerance, these pins. Yeah, they are really nice. There you go, see? They're going to be nice. No knocking with those. And then I'm going to fit them onto here. Now, I've fitted this one A, and that's the front that way. So I want this one, that's the front, and I want that one that way. It doesn't really mean make much of a difference to tell you on this truth because the rods are pretty symmetrical. Uh, I'm going to now try that pin in here. Oh, we've got a bit of dirt in there. Great, we'll get through tons of brake play. That's the problem when you're grinding aluminium, it gets everywhere. Right, that's nice and clean now. Let's try this. They yeah, are a nice snug fit. They're really nicely machined, eh? So, now we've got that into there. Find which is the front. There's the front. And now our rod goes in like that. Somehow. Yeah. 
There we go. Now, before we push it all the way through, I want to put the circlips in. Now, uh, an old chap many years ago told me, and they used to do race cars, they don't put the circlips in that way, if you see what I mean. Like the, uh, the holes are horizontal, they put them in at the bottom like this. <laughs> they said that with centrifugal force these clips can actually come out. I don't know, I probably didn't fit them properly in the first place, but anyway, we'll, we'll uh, learn off their mistakes. So we're going to put them in, 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 this, in this groove first. And then they should just snap in. Get that in. Yep. Not quite. Ah, whatever in it. There we go, that's better. Just, just make sure they are snapped in properly. Then we can push the, piston, the pin through. And do the same with this side. It's unusual that the pistons come with the rings already attached, usually they're uh, separate. Just make sure they're in, into that groove. That one doesn't look too clever. Mm. I wonder if I can push it in with a... Ah, there you go. Did you hear it snap in? Don't worry about the rings. The rings are nice and free. They'll move. And inspect. Always inspect. If the... Um, if the gaps are too close together, here, that means the rings hasn't gone, haven't gone in. But they'll, they'll be fine. So I'll get, get on and get all those done. Right, a little bit of a recap. We've got all these uh, pistons and rods all back together again. We've got the circlips in in uh, that fashion. Uh, uh, little eyes down at the bottom and they're both clipped together. If you just want to make sure that they're absolutely right, because this is your last chance, just swing them around a little bit. Make sure that they're nice and free. Just a little bit of pressure. We'll turn them around if they don't, they're sticking. Push the pin through, turn them like that, look. Make sure that they're alright. Now these might have picked up a bit of dust, it's not too bad, because we're going to clean them off, but the, the, the thing that we're going to do now is mark up the rings. What do you mean mark up the rings, mate? What do you mean? Well, this is the front. It's got an arrow on the piston, and that's the front. We're going to use this, this very hard to find picture here. I don't know where it comes from, but it's in the Haynes manual of the piston. Let me show you. Can you see that? In relation to where the rings go, the ring gaps, it is quite important. So, we're going to mark on here if that is number one. So, ring gap one, two, and three. You see that? I don't know if you can see that. Light might be shining. Yeah, that's it. That's a bit better, isn't it? So there's the ring gap. So this is number one. So the ring gap goes there. The second ring goes round here, like that. And the third ring goes round there, like that. The reason for that is that. I think uh, which side? I think the camshaft side is the thrust side. I should really say this. You should really read it. But I think the camshaft side is the thrust side, which is this side. So all the thrust goes this way. When it, when the piston's going down, it's uh, when the piston goes down, it goes. It's pushing this way. So we we don't want any gaps here because it could make a little bit of a groove. We don't want to get in the groove like Madonna again because I'm sick of doing that joke now. So I'm going to do all these, set them all up. Clamp the rings and then we've got to go across and put them in the um, in the block, which is a job I don't like doing. Right, so here we go. I'm going to oil the rings and the piston quite well. 
Now, funnily enough, I was watching uh, Eric the car guy the other day, and they were building an engine, and all they used was WD-40. I, I couldn't believe it. I didn't think that would be good enough, but apparently it is, so we're not going to use it. Right. Here's our compression tool. We've used this many a time. It's a very simple one, but quite effective. I'm going to clamp the piston like that. And just give it a little wiggle all the time. Now, the skirt here is wider than here, so we have to really be careful when we knock these pistons down. I'm just going to set that thing down a little bit there, look. Yeah, so it's a bit even. Right, and I modified this by putting some little notches at the bottom so this didn't go inside the bore. Next thing, I need to find some uh, rubber tube to put onto the um, studs to protect the bore. So there you go, I just chopped a bit of rubber off. This, this will help and we don't want to catch the, the uh, crank. So we're going to put two rods in uh, we're going to put number one and number four in first, then turn the crank and then, then do two and three. I hope that makes sense. Let's go to the block. So here we go. The machine shop should have chamfered the top edge of here. So everything goes in nicely. Again, we're going to use glyco bearings, but this time these, I can't believe it, these are made in Poland. So we've had South African and Polish, can't they make them all at the same factory? Well, I carry on, eh? Right, let's open these up. Again, just let's take care of these. Now these are all the same, these bearings. We don't have to worry about these too much. Let's take them out of the packet. Take two out. Bear with me. <laughs> now this, I was going to do this a different way. I was actually going to put the pistons in first, um, and then fit the bushing, the rod, you know, the, the bearing. But well, I think we'll get away with it because sometimes the bearings drop out. So we made sure our our rod is nice and clean. We'll put the bearing in. There we go. Now, where's our thick oil gone? That's disappeared. Wait a minute, I'll go and get some. We'll drop a bit onto the journals. And on my hammer. Smooth it, smooth it around. I have seen people put all these together dry and then hoping that the uh, hoping that the engine will uh, work. I don't think so. Right, so we've got our marks on top of our piston here. This is the front. There we go. Now, just tap that. Right. <laughs> I hate this bit. I really do because I've broke rings doing this before. But, no. I might edit this out. Hey, that's how it should go. Nice and sharpish. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get on with all the rest of them. Um, I'm going to do this number one piston, or A, I'm going to do that next and then um, fasten it up on the crank, if you see what I mean. I don't think the journal, I don't think the bearing fell out, so we're all right. So let's go back to the uh, bench and do that again. And then when you've got all the pistons in, we'll come back, because there's no point going backwards and forwards. We'll spin it upside down and torque them down. When we're putting the caps on, we must put, uh, you see I stamped on there a little A, it really should be one, but I didn't have any. Uh, they always go together, it's really important. So we've marked A on the rod and A on the cap. 
now we're going to try and fit them fit them on like that those two on and then we'll get the cap from here and put that one on. Grab a shell generally speaking the tangs always go together so if you see a tang on that side that's where the cap goes on but that's why we always mark up the shells Put the caps on in. What am I doing? As you can see, lashings of uh, oil already on the crank. Now these might be a bit tight, so I hold on to the bottom and then give them a tight nut. What I'm going to do is first of all. You sort of just do, just give them a little nip. I'm not talking about anybody from Japan, so don't jump on to me. I'm going to nip them up a little bit so that uh, <clears throat> they're not too tight when I turn it over. If you see what I mean, just pull up that uh, piston a bit. This should be a, quite a nice smooth uh, running engine. I hope the clutch is balanced. Right, so that's just a little nip. So that's, that's basically what we do. Then we'll turn it 180 degrees round. Uh, and do the other end, I'll just get a pie bar. I've just put a couple of bolts in the crank here. I just put a couple of bolts in here just so we can easily spin it over. There we go. So now we want all that lovely, lovely lubrication. This is a perk of the job, you know. You can see how nice and freely it all turns over. This, this is going to be nice. I, re I reckon this is going to be nice. Now, whilst we're underneath here, you can see here and here where the uh, silicone sealer has squidged out. That's good. So that when we put our uh, cover on, uh, our sump, we will have a nice seal on that joint there. There, I've seen so many of them leak around here, so I don't want that happening ever again. Right, let's get these other two pistons in. <clears throat> and then we can... Uh, oh, I don't know what we'll do. I think I'll put the sump on last. Um, don't know. We, I think I'd, uh, today I think what we'll do is... Oh, you can see how fast it flips around. Oh yeah, we can, we'll work out the head. Because you see, we've got to work out the step. And actually, if those pistons are on top dead centre, oh, there they are. That's, that's top dead centre, yeah. There. There's hardly any protrusion at all. But they are even. <laughs> you don't want them sticking out too far, you know what I mean? Because he only took about one or two thousandths of an inch off. And I don't know if you can see very clearly on here. You can still see bits of markings from the old gasket. So he's just to say shaved it off. Nice. Right, with all the caps in place, 
Uh, 79 Newton meters for the uh, bearing caps. And we'll turn it round. Right, we'll find me turning around the thing. Ah, there it is. Good. Now then, now that's in that position, I think we'll put in the uh, the, the pipe for the um, pickup pipe and the return pipe for the breather type of thing.